Well, greetings and God bless you in the wonderful name of our living Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Robert Hagan, and uh, today I'd like to get into God's holy matchless word and as far as our liberty, our liberty in Christ. And what we want to do, first of all, is uh, we want to go to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. And uh, the record in the Gospel of Luke is uh, Jesus being led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. And as you go through this chapter, you get down to verse 14. This is after Jesus comes back from the wilderness. It says in, in verse 14 of Luke chapter 4, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. I wonder why that was. You think that there may have been a few people that knew that he had gone into the wilderness and he was there for 40 days and had survived that? Just a thought. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And you have to understand that back then they didn't have King James Bibles with tabs like the one I have. They were scrolls. They delivered this scroll to him. He knew exactly which one that he needed to read. He found the place where it was written. And this is what he said. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And all the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. You know what he was saying to them? This is talking about me. I'm here to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to bring sight back to the blind, to raise those people that are dead again to life. I'm here. This is this is my ministry. This is what I'm going to fulfill. And when he said in it, this day is a scripture fulfilled in your ears, that's why it, the eyes were fastened on him. They went. Who is, who is this upstart? What is, who does he think he is? The religious leaders were upset already with him, but now they were really upset with him because he was saying, you know, I'm the chosen one, and this is what God sent me to do. And just think about that, the liberty, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to set at liberty anybody whose life is not going right. Uh, we all have stories about how we came to a knowledge of the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And many of us look back on it and we say, why me? But I'm, I'm real thankful that he took the time to seek me out. That's for sure. Okay, Romans chapter 8. We're going to roam on over to Romans chapter 8. But just think about it. If you were Jesus Christ and you stood up. <laughs> you started reading these things to these guys, and all of a sudden they were, Ooh! you know, their eyes were fastened on you because you actually had the gall to speak these things. Okay, we're going to um, go back and we're going to start in verse 16 of Romans chapter 8. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glor also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest 
expectation of the creature, or the creation, actually, I should say, waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creation was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope, because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. It says in these verses that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Um, this is a fantastic truth. So if you were to say to somebody, what gives you the right to say that? You can go to Romans chapter 8 and you can read that to them. This is what Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, had God had him write this down. This is the truth. You're an heir of God and you're a joint heir with Christ Jesus. Our identity is with the Lord Jesus Christ. His life, his, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and his ascension. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. You, There's many sections in the Ephesians and in Colossians and the church epistles that talk about this. But this is fantastic stuff. You know, this. you think about the liberty that you have. It's, it's really terrific. Um, to be taken from from death into life. Let's let's go ahead and let's look at First Thessalonians. And we're going to go to chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 8 through 10. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God would is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. You see, before you get born again of God's Spirit, um, you're the Lord of your life. You're the part of the first part, second part, and every other part. And uh, there is a certain degree of idolatry involved in not having a belief in the one true and living God and the Lord Jesus Christ. We all have built idols in our lives that we have to, we're still dealing with them. And that's part of, uh, it's a no, whole nother subject about the renewed mind, putting on the mind of Christ. But Paul said in that first chapter of Thessalonians, you know, you, you people went and you, you, you spoke the word and you turn people from idols. There's a tremendous amount of idolatry going on in that part of the world in the first century, and it hasn't really changed that much. In fact, it's probably more of it today. Uh, there's a lot easier ways of communicating. We have a, a 24 hour a day, seven day a week news cycle now. Uh, we can go on the internet and we can bring up Uptime Church. We can go on the internet and we can bring up things that are edifying and we can go on the internet and we can just about see anything on the internet you know what i mean things that are that build you up and things that don't but the thing about it was in the first century they, they there was a word of mouth that moved the word of god over the known world you know i would tell sam sam would tell larry larry's would tell his wife and his wife and kids would get saved and then they would tell their neighbors and then they would tell their neighbors and it's all through the book of Acts, Acts chapter 10, Cornelius, you know, witnessing to, you know, Peter went to Cornelius and the whole family and his, everybody followed the lead of the man of God. And they, they all, it was the, the cultural thing to do. If, if I were the head of a household and I believe my wife and my kids and servants and everybody would, the respect they would have, that they would, they would definitely look into it. Okay. If that makes sense. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. When you get down to verse 17, it says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That's, you know, you think about that for a second. That's a great promise. If that were the only thing that we had, 
being followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, just to be able to be at liberty, that, that would be enough for most people. But he came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. John chapter 10, verse 10. You know, it talks about how the, the thief comes not but to, to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now, I've said this before when I've shared the word before. Either Jesus Christ told the truth. And if he told the truth, we, we should look into it. We should give it a chance. You've heard that song. Why don't you wake up and give Christ a chance? Um, if he lied, if he was a charlatan, or if he was just doing this so he had, would have a following of people, then the best thing we can do is just to forget the whole thing. Just eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. There's no, there's no real point in, in endeavoring to walk according to this Bible, the word of God that we have. Excuse me. And I believe he did tell the truth. And I believe that he did come that we might have a life and have it more abundantly. I believe that's the reason for the uptime church channel. Is to bring people back to a knowledge of the truth. Is that somebody to tune in can, can look and, and hear that Jesus Christ came to give his life for you and me. Um, love that it's beyond our comprehension, but we can receive it because we, we believe he did it for us and he sought us out, you know, not that we love God, but God loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins, to be the payment in full. He came and he paid it in full. You know, he wrote my name down, Bob Hagen folded it over and put it right on the, the way into the town. His debt is paid in full. And I'll tell you one thing. If he paid the debt in full, the least we can do is to live for him. How about it? Now we're going to go to <laughs> Galatians chapter two. Pretty, pretty amazing. Absolutely an amazing Lord. In, an incredible Lord. The most amazing man that ever. Galatians chapter 2, um, I'm going to start off in verse 1. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem, Paul speaking, with Barnabas and took Titus with me also, and I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them that were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in priv privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Uh, these false brethren, they came to the, the liberty, the point I'm trying to make here is the liberty we have in Christ Jesus. Paul had to deal with the same thing. He had to he was constantly dealing with the religious hierarchy. He was, he was dealing with people who had a form of godliness, but they denied the power therein. It is in second Timothy chapter three, verse five, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. It's a form of godliness to me is like religion. Like when I was involved in Buddhism before I became a Christian, it's a form of godliness, Buddhism. Being a, a follower of, of Muhammad is a form of godliness. Being a follower of the Hindu religions and the Tibetan religions and all these other religions is a form of godliness. But you're denying the power thereof, the power that's in the one true and living God and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the only representative. If of a quote unquote major religion, if you will want to call Christianity a religion, I think it's a way of a father with his children, a relationship that the representative being Jesus Christ actually rose from the dead and is still alive at the right hand of the father 
making intercession for us daily. It's just sometimes I sometimes when I think about that, I just it takes my breath away. I'm so thankful. And I, I I've got stuff that I'm dealing with right now, but I'm still thankful that I have a sound enough mind to realize that it's true. Now we're going to go to Galatians chapter five, chapter five, verse one. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Is there a yoke of bondage? Yes, there is. It says in the word of God that we're to take, um, you know, to be yoked together with the Lord Jesus Christ. We have liberty in Christ because he came and he took all the sin. He took all the problems, all the temptations that we have, all that stuff nailed it to his cross. It said, he said, it is finished. He fulfilled it all. He led captive, captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. There's many, many things in the epistles. But the liberty we have, it, it's real. It's not a, um, it's not a fantasy. Um, people say that it's a crutch. Look, if you, <laughs> I had to use some crutches for a couple of weeks and I just had my knee operated on. And I had to lean on those. But you know what? I don't have any problem telling people I lean on the Lord Jesus Christ at all. Because the word of God says that I'm a joint heir with him. And I'm, you know, want to represent him. And I'd like to see people come back to a knowledge of the truth. And I'm sure you would too. So we stand there for, we stand fast in liberty where with Christ that made us free. Now let's go to James chapter one. Another tremendous book. I'll tell you, it's interesting when you, you start spending some time looking in the Bible, you kind of, you just read through different sections of it and you start picking these things up and you go, hey, you know, it kind of fits together. I wonder how all that happened. There's one author. There's many writers. That's how that worked out. Holy men of God were moved. You know, they were inspired. They were given the words by the Holy Spirit. That's what they wrote. It wasn't just some, you know, here's Isaiah out in the, out in the desert with a quill. Isaiah was inspired. All the Old Testament prophets were inspired. The New Testament apostles and prophets were inspired. And we can be inspired today, too. James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You can read back, starting off in the first part of the chapter, read through 22. For if ye... For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. You see, this is, listen, what manner of man he was. Verse 25, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man should be blessed in his deed. See, he forgets what manner of man he was. Before he was born again to the spirit of God, he was a, he drank a lot. He went out and he smoked a lot of dope. He did a lot of things that were inconvenient. Let's put it that way. Not getting into too much detail. But then he changed lords. You know, he wanted to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. He wanted to live according to the word. And he has to look into the perfect. It says here, it's the perfect law of liberty. What's the perfect law of liberty? The completed work of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's just, and that's the thing. It's complete. It says we're complete in him. And in the Greek, it's completely, completely, absolutely complete in him. You can't find any more completeness in right there. Now we're going to um, go um, up one chapter to James chapter 2, and we're going to look at verse 12. So speak ye, and so do, 
as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. See, the word of God is the critic. You know, man, we're dealing right now with man's day where man is the one that makes the rules. And all you have to do is turn the TV on. and You can see all the criticism and all, especially this season of politics that's going on right now. It's unbelievable. Uh, I know there's going to be another debate on Thursday night. And uh, I don't know. I'm One thing I continue to do is pray for the country. And I, I really hope and pray that you do too. Uh, the word of God says we should pray for the ones that are in leadership positions. Even if you don't agree with them, pray for them. Because I, I don't envy their positions. Um, pray for yourself. Pray for your families. Um, if you, uh, if your mom and dad are still alive, pray for them. My dad passed away in 2010. My mom is still alive. Bless her heart. She's 99 now. And still, still as sharp as a tack for the most part. She says she's getting tired. But she said, of course I am. I'm 99 years old. She's funny. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a mom's darling. I love her pieces. But, um, we just have a lot to be thankful for. You know. And um, what I want to do now is I want to go to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 14. And then I want to show you something. I want to prove to you that Jesus is the way. If you've never known this, you're going to see it in the scriptures right now. Well, you're making that up, Bob. No, I'm not making this up at all. And it's, it's interesting because when you show people in the word, then they can say, well, you know, that's just what's written in there. They can go ahead and argue. They can argue all they want with it. But a lot of times you show them in here, they go, I never knew that was in there. Okay. John chapter 14. We're going to read verses 1 through 6. Okay. Chapter 14 of the book of John. Verse 1. And Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. I'm so, what, what a wonderful Savior. What a, what a lovely Savior. What a, I mean, what love in his heart. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. That's a great promise, isn't it? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. Now, that's something I'm looking forward to. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Then Jesus said unto him, Thomas, you asked too many questions. No. Thomas said unto him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man comes into the Father but by me. Jesus said to him, you know, I've been with you. It's me. You know it's me. And it's, it's, it's incredible because these men were with him on a daily basis for quite a while. All the things that happened, all the things they saw, and there was still doubt in their hearts, a lot of them. But as you go through the word and you get into the book of Acts, and you see what happened in the first century, how after the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, they became filled with the Holy Spirit. They went forth signs, miracles, and wonders through the book of Acts. Those things still do happen to this very day. Excuse me. Um, it wasn't just for the first century church and then it stopped when the Bible was finally written. They do continue. Uh, one of the one of these times when I uh, come on here to do a teaching, I want to talk about the um, manifestations, uh, also known as the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are nine in number. There are maybe others. I mean, there's other things that are connected to that too. Many people have gifts within the, within the body of Christ. Um, many people are, uh, you know, helps and governments and, you know, hospitality. And there's people that are dynamic at 
doing all kinds of different things that we all need each other, that's for sure. Okay, now what I want to go to, I want to show you this, an example of this liberty in Christ. And we're going to go to Luke chapter 24. And this is, we're going to, after that, we're going to wrap it up here. Luke chapter 24, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. It's just fantastic. Um, I'll tell you one thing. I wish that I could have been transported and took the place of one of these gentlemen that was walking on the road to Emmaus. We're going to go to Luke chapter 24, starting at verse 13. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. I'm not exactly sure how far that is. It's several miles, I believe. Maybe up to six miles. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Okay, here comes Jesus. <laughs> and their eyes were holden that they should not know him. This is interesting. You read this. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one with another as ye walk and are sad? This is the risen Lord Jesus Christ saying to him, How come you guys are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass in these days? As he said unto them, What things? Jesus said, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and in word, before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all of this, this is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished which were early at the sepulcher when they found not his body and came saying they had also seen a vision of angels which said he was alive. Just think about that for a second. And he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Now Jesus is talking to them again. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? Well, if we could just get a, a tape of this, you know, he said. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Wow. And they drew nigh into the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. Listen. He broke the bread. This is significant. He just didn't say, it's me and vanish. He took the bread. He blessed it. He broke the bread and he gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Oof. And this is the verse here that is so terrific. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us? While he talked with us, by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures. I believe with all my heart that when you get born again of God's spirit, you, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and really get to know God and the Lord Jesus Christ, your heart will burn within you. And it's not a heart burn. I'm talking about your heart will burn within you to want to make known the truth. Speaking the truth in love. It's God's will that all men be saved and come to knowledge of the truth. But he has, we are here to represent the Lord Jesus Christ. It talks about in Corinthians how we're ambassadors for God. You know, it says all through the word that we're supposed to 
go out there. We have a mission. I did a teaching recently on called the mission. Our mission is to bring people back to a knowledge of the truth. And um, let's go to Romans chapter 10 and verses 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And what did they do in the first century church? This is what they did. They, they, they taught people to repent and to make Jesus the Lord. And Jesus just didn't come so he could get a few people to follow him. He came to buy, he, he came to, to bridge that chasm. You know, you've seen those tracks where there's a, a chasm and, and man is on one side and then there's this long canyon. And then on the other side is the Lord. He came to bridge that, to bridge that gap. And it's, it's a simple thing to do. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and to believe it in your heart. Um, if you're out there and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you can just say, Lord, you know, I've tried to do this my own way for all these years and I need some help. And uh, show me what to do. And if you're truly seeking the one true and living God and the Lord Jesus Christ, he'll show you. It's like I've said before, fasten your seatbelts because it's gonna, you're going to need to. Because he's going to show you a lot of things. And I certainly appreciate you taking the time today to tune in to hear the word of God. And I just thank the Father cover for me and the things that I've may have messed up during this time. I try to um, present the word as he lays it on my heart. Uh, I certainly appreciate the time that's uh, that you take to listen to it and uh, appreciate the support uh, for Uptime Church and um, thankful to Greg for making this available. And I just want to say a prayer at the end here. And, uh, here's a Heavenly Father, I thank you for the, the time that I've had on here to share your word. And thank you for the liberty we have in Christ. I thank you for LaVon Yoder, who comes to mind, who was in that automobile accident up in uh, Wisconsin. And I uh, thank you for saving his life and bringing him back from the, with all, the, all the injuries. He said, thank you for all the people who will be listening to this and bless each one of their lives and the powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.